My name is Justin Everett. I'm executive chef of Cavallo Point and Farley Bar in Sausalito. I think being a chef for me was the ability to have a creative outlet and work with my hands and have a craft and play with knives and fire and it just seemed like it was the perfect thing for me and I'm really happy that I found it at such a young age because um, I, you know, I couldn't really see myself being successful at anything else so I feel blessed to have uh, chosen this path. Um, responsible, I think first and foremost, I think chefs have the responsibility um, to, first of all, we're, we're feeding and nourishing people to, to put the, the most wholesome, um, not only delicious, but wholesome food in front of them and, <clears throat> and it's a responsibility to do that and I think more chefs could, could take more responsibility in that. Um, clean, I like to think of our food as um, our guests can come and enjoy a meal and know that it was um, not muddied up by um, a lot of things. The type of food that we choose to serve, um, we want it pristine and we want it um, in its best form and we feel that if we source responsibly that, that our product is that. Um, I think I realized a long time ago that the thing that I enjoyed, one of the things I enjoy most about being a chef is the relationship aspect of it. Um, of course, we have this great relationship with our guests who come and enjoy our food. Um, but the, the cool relationships that I started to forge with, uh, with local purveyors and farmers, and I realized that, that, that like chefs, we're this kind of weird, uh, quirky group. And, and so are farmers. I'm, I mean, they're all characters. Each one I met was its own different, unique individual. And that was, you know, I strive to find cr more crazy, you know, cool people that I you know, we talk for hours sometimes. We have purveyors that come in our back door. Um, my good buddy Don Watson comes in the back door and um, every time he's there I have to cut out an hour just to sit and talk to him about uh, life and, and, uh, and food and everything. Politics, it's, 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 it's again, it's those great relationships that, that we have. Um, and I find that more and more when the purveyor comes to the back door every week it's like it's like seeing seeing your friends and and uh, I love that aspect of what we do and that would I wouldn't I would be it would be a shame if I didn't have that if I just called up one place and had them come and drop things at the at the back door uh, that valuable relationship would be gone I think if more chefs knew how rewarding that was they would they would have the incentive to source responsibly I think that chefs, <clears throat> more so now than, than previous generations of chefs, we have more of a voice. I think before we were behind the scenes cooking and there was really no identity in, in the kitchen. And I think we've been fortunate enough in the, in the last 10 years or so to be able to, um, to come out of the kitchen a little bit and, and again, like I said, have a voice. And, and I think if more chefs chose to use that, that voice, in, in a responsible way, um, they can motivate people. Um, we have this great ability to touch people. We're feeding them, um, and if they have this relationship, or they, we can 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 meet them face to face. We have a great opportunity to um, kind of say why we do and what we do things. And, and um, I think if if chefs realize that, they would um, um, realize that their voice matters and uh, utilize that for, for good. Yeah. I think the first way I notice it <clears throat> is, um, I think, like you said, over the last 10, 15 years, you start training your, your palate to want things a certain time of year, and just coming to the market and saying, wow, I would, you know, sh cherries should be coming in, and I'm hungry for them, and if they're late, and they're two or three weeks late and you notice and maybe um, you just get that that box of cherries and they're delicious and then you find out that it's only a week or two that, that the growing season is and it, it really affects the way our clocks are set you know we want those beautiful cherries for three weeks but we're not going to compromise and just buy them from anywhere so <clears throat> by choosing to source this way 
Um, we sometimes have very limited opportunity to sell these beautiful vegetables and I think with climate change it just really affects these seasons and how, how our food grows. Um, a great example is our, you know, we love wild mushrooms and, and we have a, a lot of good friends that forage mushrooms and wild, wild ingredients for us and if we don't get the rain we need um, then it's, it's just a mess and maybe again like porcinis are this beautiful thing that we love to sell but if they're only available for a week or two then, then we're disappointed and, and it affects our menus and then um, the cost goes up which then you know unfortunately has to go to our um, to our guests um, and then we, <clears throat> we we hurt when our when our farmers are struggling and they have to pay more money like the ranchers have to pay more money f to supplement their feed if there's not enough rain for grass and they have to buy organic feed because again they will not compromise right. then it's hmm. it's not like it's just this faceless person that's a rancher it's our friend mm -hmm. and we want to support them and uh, it makes it difficult um, and uh, we don't get the opportunity to change our menu as much I believe if we're limited with ingredients so it kind of curbs our creativity sometimes when those ingredients aren't available when we're uh, when we're used to having them so definitely seen over the years it just sometimes it feels all over the board um, tomatoes <clears throat> can be really late um, you know way into the fall and not start for a while and uh, it, it, it makes menu planning um, difficult, but again, um, just staying true to that seasonality that, that we've kind of trained our palates to want food when it's when it's when it's ready and when it's the best it can be. <clears throat> and uh, our guests, hopefully, I think chefs, like you mentioned earlier, chefs' responsibility is. I think diners are, are becoming more like that, appreciating the, you know, not necessarily wanting a plum in January 